Yes, welcome to another episode of Let There Be Talk, episode number 687. Today, it will be a solo episode. Welcome aboard. I just got back from uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. Four headlining shows at the incredible Comedy Fort, which is uh, over the last couple of years, risen up to the top five clubs in America, in my eyes. And uh, a big shout out to David Rodriguez, the owner, and Chase Bernstein, who featured for me. But a huge shout out to a lot of people that came out. There was four sold out shows. And uh, that is probably uh, one of the few times that I have sold out the weekend. And that is... Uh, a mystery to me how you know you can get it all lined up at some places and other places you can't but it was great i didn't know if it was going to be any good i had no idea that spring break was happening there's a college like two blocks away from the club and you never know when you're booking stuff you just don't know i don't know when anything is you know i don't know like i'll show up somewhere and i'll be like ah oh, fuck it's easter no idea to me they say you want to do these gigs and i go yep and i jump on it and then when it comes i'm like oh what the fuck cinco de mayo the worst time to gig besides saint patrick's day which is this friday i just saw that on my calendar it's like oh shit show when you're doing comedy on those uh terrible rookie drinking holidays they're not even holidays, really. I mean, what are they? I don't know. Anyway, so it was great to be out in Fort Collins again. And uh, man, I would shoot a special in there. It's such a magic room. It's just basically, uh, if you've ever been to UCB in Los Angeles on Franklin, it's kind of like a mini UCB. And it just has this vibe. The laughs pop like crazy. It's called the Comedy Fort because of Fort Collins, but it also feels to me like a cool fort. It actually is like a comedy fort. Great food around there. And uh, the weather was good. It was uh, 50 degrees. Snowed like crazy the week before. Mm. But uh, great weather. They got this place. It's called Illegal Pete's. And it's like what Chipotle wishes they were. I wish there was an illegal pizza all over America. It's just super clean. I guess it's local, um, you know, produce and stuff. So it just tastes fantastic. And their hot sauce is amazing. Illegal pizza. And then they got another place that's been there like 100 years or something. I think it's the Silver, Silver Diner. So good food. Amazing uh, comedy club. The owner, David, is just fantastic. So, yeah, man, thank you for coming out. And uh, some people had seen me there in July and came back out again. And thank God I had a bunch of new material. I've been working on a new uh, bunch of new material. And I would say this weekend, I'm finally feeling uh, pretty good about running an hour after being down all this time since COVID running an hour. is just so it's so insane, man. It's, it's absolutely hard. I don't care what anybody says. It's easy to run a shitty hour, just be up there, do crowd work and tell some, you know, mediocre jokes, but to put together a full hour that has a, a great thread and kind of a semi theme. It's, it's almost impossible. If you're, you know, not doing it every weekend. So after a bunch of weekends in a row, I feel pretty damn good. And I think that if I could do like 10 weekends in a row, man, I would just be smashing. But I felt pretty damn good about uh, headlining. I got to say that. And thank you again for everybody that came out. Oh, uh, what do we got? I got on the list here. Rosington, Gary Rosington passed away. And this is just horrific. He was the last original member of Leonard Skinner. I've said it over and over years and years that I love Skinner. And 
uh, he's gone. I never went to go see Leonard Skinner uh, after the plane crash. I never saw him before the plane crash, but after the plane crash, I never went to see him because it just was not, uh, didn't feel right to me. And I, I stuck with that the entire uh, span of the Skinner lineups all the way up until uh, last night, I believe they played. Gary Rosenton's gone. They're out there playing. And it is a full blown cover band, and you know if you if if you're one of those people that was like I never saw Skinner, so I'm going to see him. Well, you're not seeing Skinner. You're seeing the name. You are seeing the name Leonard Skinner, but there is no one in that band that is an original member of Leonard Skinner. It's a lot like uh, going to see Foreigner, and you know my uh, rage on Foreigner. I. Uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I can't really blame the band anymore because the people go and I don't know if they don't know or they don't care or they got free tickets or what, but uh, I just can't imagine going to see Leonard Skinner uh, right now with no original members. That is That is just mind boggling to me. That is a tribute band. That is what that is. And that's what Foreigner is. And um, a lot of bands have like one member left. And, you know, I get it. They they got to make a living. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying you're not going to get any of my money or respect. It's crazy to me. It is crazy to me that Rosington died a few days ago. And there's the band out there playing a couple nights later with a video behind him like, yeah, yeah, he passed away, but uh, we're still here, you know? So I don't know. That's a, a mini a mini rage right there. I'm not really furious about it because uh, like I said, I, I never went to uh, see Skinner, even when they had a lot of the original members. Uh, just didn't feel right to me. But uh, now, ooh, man, I couldn't imagine. Uh, you know, a lot of those bands, they said that, like, you know, they were going to do that uh, farewell tribute to Skinner years and years ago, the first run. And uh, they've been going ever since. So Gary Rosenton, one of the greatest guitar players of all time and songwriters. And I truly believe totally underrated. Totally underrated. If you have not seen the Skinner documentary, uh, I would I would highly recommend this. It is just incredible what this band created. The greatest U.S. rock band. Uh, I was talking to Greg Dooley about it a couple of days ago, and you know, there's the argument: is it is it ZZ Top? Is it Aerosmith? Is it Van Halen? Or is it Skinner? And I would say for me, it's definitely Skinner. Aerosmith is definitely up in there. And Aerosmith uh, still running all the original members. Although I do not think that the drummer is in the band anymore or he's injured or something's going on there. But, you know, you cannot deny how powerful Skinner is. I think the greatest rock footage of Skinner is that day in the green. There's like three songs from the day in the green when they played and to watch that free bird and Gary's slide work on the SG. It is unreal to see 65,000 people. I posted it on my Instagram, just going crazy for free bird. I, Freebird never gets old to me. I was talking about how I want to invent this app to where you could uh, you could plug it in on your uh, on your stereo or your car radio, and it won't play songs that you don't ever want to hear again. I call it Nope. So you know, Sirius XM, they always fire up Thin Lizzy, and its boys are back in town. You know, and it's like they got so many good songs. So Nope. Anyway, with Skinner, I never um, I never pass on Freebird. I, I don't I don't change the channel. 
it's never gets old to me ever because to hear that guitar outro, it is just unreal to me. And it never gets old because you just listen to it. You go like, first of all, recording that in the studio. That's just incredible that they caught that lightning in a bottle just to hear how how insane the three guitars are, you know, and, uh, and you know, Steve Gaines, once he's in there and they're just doing the, the three guitar attack day on the green. Anyway, Rosington, go check out that footage and check out the documentary. If you have not seen the documentary, it is just a scorcher. You know, they got together. Rosington wanted to play baseball, which is crazy. He wanted, he wanted to be on the Yankees. Can you imagine if that would have happened? He was like a great baseball player. We would have never gotten fucking Tuesdays Gone or uh, Freebird, Give Me Back My Bullets, or uh, any of the great, great riffs. And, and Rosington's tone, his tone is incredible. I posted a video of uh, me uh, seeing his 59 Les Paul Bernice at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Ohio. Years back, I was doing a comedy club there and they invited me down. I went uh, recently with Marcus King and the band and we went on the, one of those backstage tours where they take you behind the scenes and show you guitars that are in the vaults but when I went uh, solo, I went back there and uh, which, by the way, I saw Joe Bonamassa went recently and they had Alan Collins Karina uh, Explorer there. So when I went, they're like, you want to see something special? And they just have these drawers and they just slid out this drawer. And there it was. Bernice is 59 Les Paul. And man, it stopped me in my fucking tracks. And I've told the story before, but I'm just telling you right now as I'm uh, reminiscing over Gary Rosington, that guitar, I looked at it for about a half hour. The back, the fretboard, the pickups, the patina all over, the, the finish, the color, perfect kind of faded honey amber. Unreal. Just to see that guitar and look at it right there and go, that's that's his Les Paul, which I wonder where it is today. There's got to be a battle going on behind scenes. Hopefully his uh, family has it. I don't know what's going on, but he had that killer SG and he had that Les Paul. And one of my uh, regrets, I sold, I had the, uh, I had the Murphy uh, Gary Rosington Les Paul reissue. And I sold it to this guy that worked at, uh, Bill Wall Leather. Uh, that's one of my regrets. R regret selling guitars was that one. I mean, I don't regret it. Uh, you know, if it was here, I wouldn't be playing it. But it was a really cool guitar. He had put the uh, gold hardware on his Les Paul, and it was all worn out, like the pickup covers and stuff. And it just looked so cool. And I had, I had one. But... Uh, I would love to know where that 59 Les Paul is today because they said those guitars are on loan from time, time and time again, like they loan it to the rock and roll hall of fame. Then the people get it back. Then they loan it again. So it'd be really cool to uh, know where that is. And I wonder if it's going to go up for sale. I'm sure it will. And I wonder how much it'll get. Now, if you watch him on the uh, Day in the Green footage, he's playing all the slide stuff on the uh, Gibson SG. And I never got to talk to Gary. I wish I, I, wish I could have, because I would love to ask him what would make him go back and forth. Uh, why would he be on the SG sometimes and the Les Paul other times? He played the Les Paul a lot. And... Uh, Man, hopefully that SG's around still, too. They did do an SG uh, reissue of his uh, guitar also. So, Gary Rosington, fly high, my brother, survived a plane crash, multiple heart attacks, 
heavy, heavy drug addiction, a brutal car crash that uh, that smell was wrote about hitting the oak tree, oak tree up in my way. This guy had nine lives, man. He was real deal. The guy lived it hard. And, uh, you know, that's that that old 70s rock and roll star, man. They just uh, they were out on the road all the time, lonely, pre cell phones and 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 all that. Just be in your hotel board partying on, man. So Gary Rosenton, last original member of Leonard Skinner. And still to this day, I would say weekly, I play that one more from the road. Uh, that's one of the greatest live records. I absolutely love it. Burr and I did the Fox Theater in Atlanta where that was recorded. We did it last year. And when you walk on, it says, play it pretty for Atlanta. I was so fired up to play that place, the Fox Theater. Still think about it to this day, just being in there. And them saving that place. It was going to get the wrecking ball. And they said, look, we'll come and play three nights free. Donate the money to save this place. And that's what they did. And they uh, recorded it and put out one of the greatest live records ever by a rock band. Steve Gaines is new in the band at the time. And uh, Cassie's brother. And it was just magic. It caught magic. Opened with Working for MCA, which is one of my favorite Skinner songs. Just a song about getting a record deal and uh, and warning the people not to rip them off. Great lyrics. Great band. And uh, God, it's going to miss him. Gary Rosenton, man. Keep rocking, brother. Um, Last night, Oscars. Oscars uh, were happening last night. I loved, uh, I was talking to somebody and they were like, uh, yeah, I don't watch that, man. They throw their, they throw their politics around in there. You know, I always know what that means, you know. But, uh, you know, the Oscars were fantastic last night. I watched them, uh, of course, coming off the year of the Chris Rock slap. I can't believe it's been a year. That Chris Rock slap felt like it was maybe about six months ago. And... Man, it's still news because Chris just dropped a special and he did the big closing bit on the Will Smith slap. And man, it's just a, a funny world we live in. Just to think about uh, Will Smith slapped that fucker on the face, didn't get arrested, didn't get any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of uh, criminal stuff, struck a man on TV. <laughs> wow i wonder if he'll ever bounce back from that you guys think will smith will bounce back from that uh slap it's pretty pretty wild they made some uh great jokes on it last night there were some good jokes on it last night i gotta say you know and uh also shout out to lady gaga just smoking it with the no makeup on holy jeans and a black t-shirt singing that Top Gun song, unreal how great she sounded. Gaga's a real deal, man. She just is way up there in my book. Writes songs, plays instruments, sings for real with no auto tune. Now I'm not the old man going like, that's how you do it. But that is fucking how you do it. You gotta be extra blown away that she is the trifecta voice songwriting and musician which is so crazy rare in that world of pop and i don't even consider her like a uh, a pop star at all i consider her a full-on artist she basically kind of just took what madonna was doing and just crushed it a thousand times higher because madonna i'm not sure she wrote her songs and uh i don't think she played an instrument there's a time where she was just kind of uh, pressing some strings. Uh, Monty Pittman taught her some guitar. I know that. But, uh, you know, Lady Gaga, just killer. Just killer. And she crushed it at the Academy Awards. And also, by the way, um, I always watch the Academy Awards every year. 
And this is the first year where I hadn't really seen any of the movies. And I'd been talking about it on my podcast for a long time, how I just haven't gone to the movies. And it was something I did every week. And I got to get back into the rhythm of that. It's such a great escape. I would go solo, usually on a Tuesday at like noon and see a new movie every week. And I just, I, I, it's hard for me to get back into it. And I don't know why, but I need to start doing it. It also really helps with writing comedy, you know, not writing about the movie, but maybe stuff you see in the movie jogs some jokes in your brain. So I got to go, I got to do that because a lot of the movies that were up for best picture looked great. Now I had seen Elvis on an airplane flight and I had seen Top Gun at the theater, which I loved uh, Maverick, but there's some movies on here. Let me get the list that I really, you know, look like films that I, I would love and I'm going to see them. Of course, everything, everywhere, all at once, just, I know I'm going to love this movie. And Ian Edwards had said, you need to see it. it. And that was like a year ago, I remember. And I kept trying to go see it, but I was out on tour with Marcus King and there was just no time to go to the theater and sit down for a couple hours. And there's a few movies I don't want to see uh, on my on my computer. Or, you know, I don't have a TV. And my rule was always, if I don't see it in the theater, I usually don't see it. But I know all these movies in L.A. will be back in the theater for a couple weeks because of the uh, Oscars hype. But I really want to see everything everywhere all at once. Um, Tar, I heard, is fantastic. And um, I love Kate Blanchett. I absolutely love her. She's just a killer actress. Uh, Triangle Sadness, I saw Woody Harrelson is in that. I don't know what that's about, but I think I need to see that. Women Talking, I heard, is fantastic. All Quiet on the Western Front, need to see that. I'm always into these war films. And uh, Avatar, um, I mean, I should see it, but I probably I, I probably won't see that. But The the Banshees of Inna Sheeran, I've got to see that. And The Fablemans, which is the uh, Spielberg, basically a story about his life. Um, I watched the, um, Oscars last night, Gertie and I, I was just so burnt, man. That clock change, which is, this is the time zone that I, or time, you know, this side of the clock is what I love where it gets dark later. There's nothing worse than this other shit time zone where at four o'clock it's dark and you're just ready for bed. Oh, I hate that time zone. I like this one where it stays light till around nine, you know, so I'm not all fried because around four o'clock it gets dark. I'm ready for bed and I got to go out and do comedy. I'm like ready to go to sleep at like four in the afternoon. But um, anyway, I, uh, I, I want to go see those movies. And uh, I came home. Uh, fried from Fort Collins, only a couple hours sleep, took a nap, then woke up and started watching the Oscars. And, uh, you know, it, it was good. I liked it a lot. And I, oh, oh I was funny because I watched the Oscars for all kinds of stuff. I love fashion, you know? People are like, yeah, you fucking dummies, man. Look at those billionaires on the red carpet. They're fucking dead. <laughs> I love people. They just trash me. Trash successful artists. Damn, fucking fuck them, man. Fucking man. I love watching the fashion. I look at the watches, trying to see the watches. Omega's paying everyone to wear watches this year. Rolex had a million commercials uh, in between the Oscars. Wild, you know? Lenny Kravitz was, oh man, Lenny Kravitz looked great, sounded great. Lenny Kravitz has been a goddamn rock star for like 35 years. I remember the first time I saw Lenny Kravitz, he opened for Tom Petty on that free falling into the Great Wide Open tour, Oakland Coliseum. And that Lenny Kravitz first record, Mr. Cab Driver and uh, Let Love Rule. 
all of that record is so good. It's got all that Beatles flavor and shit. And I'm thinking about, look how Lenny Kravitz, how long he has been killing it. And the great thing about him is, uh, you know, he, he, it's like he hasn't dropped the ball. He looks great. He sounds great. He puts out a, each record always has some fire songs on it. Still got that uh, Craig, Craig Ross on uh, guitar with him. And uh, oh yeah, my man on the drums. It's just, it's just crazy. Uh, watching Kravitz kill it last night. What else was good on there? Um, oh, the whale. I want to see the whale. That's what I want to see. Because uh, I heard, you know, uh, what's his name? One, let me get this here. The whale. Uh, what was the guy's name on the whale? Shit, man. Where is it? Here it is. Brendan Fraser. Wild story on this Academy Awards. Brendan Fraser, he uh, he beats out basically uh, the kid that uh, played Elvis, Austin Butler. And I was kind of happy about that because uh, Austin Butler, he did a great job as Elvis. But, I, you know, I like when somebody creates a character from scratch. You know, of course, they're reading somebody else's lines, but when they don't have some kind of thing to go off of. Like, you know, when, you, when you're looking at Elvis's career, you can pretty much really just, if you've got mad talent like Austin does, you can, you know, dig in and become Elvis because you have something to kind of uh, work off of. But, uh, you know, what I saw from the whale clips, I was like, man, like the makeup and everything he had to go through. I'm like, I'm, I'm in on this. Also, I don't like to read what these movies are about. Uh, I can see, uh, uh, you know, in my mind, I'm looking at the whale and I'm like, well, he's a, a, a heavy man. So it must be like some nickname that he got in school. Here comes the whale in my mind. That's what I'm thinking, it, what, it, what it is about. But I don't know. Is it a fat shaman movie? We will see. Uh, but I don't like to Google and find out what it's about. Anyway, so uh, a lot of movies I'm going to go see this week. I'm off for like three weeks. I'm not off. I work every night. Comedy store tonight, by the way. And uh, gigs all week here in L.A. But I'm not on the road. So I kind of want to dig in and watch some movies and uh, fire up uh, some joke writing, you know. There was some corny shit. Like they had somebody dressed up as a uh, a cocaine bear. <laughs> this is throwing cocaine around. I love it. Back in the days, you couldn't just talk about cocaine at the Academy Awards. Everybody was on it. 70s, whole crowd in between commercials, slipping in, doing bumps, doing commercial bumps, coming back, just squirming in their chair. Ah. Can't wait till we go over to Spago's and do some drinking with Jack Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> Spago's. Oh, man. Academy Awards. All right. Anyway, I want to uh, I want to see those movies. I really want to see that. Uh, that the fucking movie uh, that won everything, everything, everywhere, all at once. I think just crushed it. Um. What else we got going? Let me see here. I'm just, uh, I was supposed to interview Phil Lewis today. And I don't know. This is Phil. Lewis. I was just talking to uh, Chase uh, about this, how I used to, when I sold motorcycles, there was this uh, guy who came in on Tuesday. We were always closed on Monday. He came in Tuesday, an hour late. And they're like, dude, you're an hour late. He's like, no, I'm not. And he looks at his watch and, you know, forgets to set it forward. Anyway, Phil Lewis said that he forgot to set his clock forward here on Monday, two days after. So uh, I don't know, maybe reschedule this week and get him on. Phil Lewis of LA Guns, which is, uh, I was doing all my research to interview him because I've seen LA Guns since 1988. And uh, I got to tell you, Phil Lewis is, uh, he's a great singer. He has his own sound and he can sing like a motherfucker. 
And that band in 88, 89, they were powerful. They weren't your tumbleweed sunset strip rock. They were, they, these guys, I saw them open for ACDC. They did an ACDC tour and full respect They're You know, opening for ACDC is fucking hard. People would just be booing you and shit. These guys were destroying it. And for a couple records there, they were just unreal LA guns. So hopefully we'll reschedule. They got a new record coming out called black diamond. Uh, Tracy guns um, produced it. And I got to tell you, man, I'm going to tell you this right now. It's a pretty goddamn good record. Here we are in 2023. They've been a band since 1987. And they're putting records out. And this record is is damn good. Damn good. Some of it sounds like Zeppelin. Some of it sounds like uh, Sex Pistols. It's kind of uh, edgy and all over the board. So uh, hats off to them. And hopefully we'll get Phil on here rescheduled. So that's why I'm just kind of uh, here on the couch doing this uh, bonus episode, which or not bonus, uh, solo episode, which I love doing the solo episodes. And it seems that people dig them also, which uh, means a lot to me because, you know, they're fun just to sit down and press play and see what comes out. I will tell you this, uh, somebody turned me on to a couple bands I got turned on to uh, this week. One of them is Looking Glass. And it's not that 70s Looking Glass band. It is a band from Australia, which how many fucking great bands has Australia produced? This is insane. Something in the water over there. You know, like. In America, we got these little pockets like Seattle happened from 90 to 92 or whatever. And Detroit, Motor City sound and uh, the San Francisco psychedelic hippie sound. These are all like really short scenes, uh, you know, like one or two years. But Australia and of course, America has produced some of the greatest bands all the time. I'm not an idiot, but I'm just saying it's wild how many great bands have come out of Australia. And this band, uh, Looking Glass, Stoner Rock, um, I'll tell you right now, they got an EP that came out in 2006, and I'm just hearing about it. Somebody sent me this song, Acid Tongue, and it just blew my fucking mind. I was like, wow, how have I not heard this band? And thank God I have it because now I got another fucking band to listen to. And just unreal. Uh, it's a five song EP. Acid Tongue. Check it out. Great album cover. I'd love to see these guys. 2006. Unreal that I have not heard of this band. But uh, now I'm going to spread the word on it right here. And then the other one that somebody turned me on to that I thought was pretty damn good is, uh, let me look here. Got to get this. It, it, it was kind of a country-ish, Grateful Dead, Mother Hips meets uh, maybe some, mm, what else? Will Coey, but it's it's got a lot of country in there. And um, here it is right here. So somebody turned me on to it. The song I saw on YouTube was Darlin' Corey, uh, Arkansas Traveler. I guess it's two songs. Daniel Donato's Cosmic Country. I hope I said his name right, Donato's. I hit up Greg for the Mother Hips, and he said he'd been listening to this kid for years. He's playing a... I believe Surf Green Telecaster that looks like it might be my old fucking Telecaster. It's a custom shop, slab board, uh, fretboard, slab board, fretboard, you know, so 59 to kind of 62 ish slab telly, surf green, maybe sea foam, you know, because when they age them at the uh, relic shop, it's kind of different eras, but really fucking good. And there's this live video from their sold out show at the bright box in Winchester, Virginia. Now I've done zero research on where they're from or who they are or anything. 
because I just got turned on to him and I'm looking forward to digging into it. But uh, this guy can play and he can sing and uh, a lot like Marcus King, man. He's uh, I, I, I still got to check out the songwriting, but from what I heard, I was way into it and uh, they look cool. And holy shit is their B3 player a uh, smoker, man. This guy is unreal on the B3 and the piano. So uh, Daniel Donato's, D-O-N-A-T-O-S, Cosmic Country. Really good. I posted it up on my Twitter. So check out that, the clips on, the clips on the Twitter, which by the way, this other guy, it's, you know, people turn me on to music all the time. I'm not some fucking, uh, you know, uh genius over here just finding stuff out of the sky sometimes i hear it in a restaurant or a, a coffee shop or or airplane or something or sometimes i'm in a record store and i hear it or people send me over shit and i'm like hey man that's fucking good you know and then i i spread the word but uh it's funny this guy tweeted at me today and he said, when you get a chance, check out the new rock band. I'm not going to say the name because I don't even want to promote the band because I hated it so much. And you know how I always say promote what's great, not what you hate. That's why I'm not dropping the band name. But it was uh, awful. It was awful. And it was like really bad 80s uh, rock. And there seems to be this uh, resurgence a bad 80s rock and i've said it over and over where people go these guys are keeping rock alive and it's not even close to the truth and i've said it a million times how rude that is to bands that have uh, been playing rock for the last 20 years like a rival sons or a mastodon or all these bands that are are crushing rock bands neil francis um you know marcus king Tons of great, great bands that have been playing rock. And for some reason, these people that just have a, a small mind and a small thought of what they think were the good old days, no good music anymore, and all that. Um, it, it's funny how they think, well, this band, you know, they got a, a wallet chain and and they, you know, yeah, yeah, come on, baby, yeah. Yeah, get in the back seat. Ah. It's it's mind boggling to me because the the songwriting is atrocious, and it's like SNL spoofs. It looks like a Saturday Night Live parody of an '80s band. A lot of these bands, I would say, about ninety five percent of them that I've seen, uh, and I and I know I grew up like if you let's just let's just say this right now. If you go, I watched uh, earlier today, YouTube, uh, LA Guns in Tokyo, 1988, and watch that fucking band and watch how powerful and crushing and how great the songs are, and then put on any of these bands or put on a uh, Jane's Addiction, 80s band, or put on a GNR, uh, Right up until the first few weeks of uh, the Do uh, Illusion Records, or put on uh, who else can we we put on from that era? It, these bands and watch how fucking crushing they are, and how many good songs they have on their records. And then put your uh, your these guys are saving rock up right now. It's not even close. It's not even close, man. They're they're basically versions of the um, bad versions of the bands that were way way down there on the '80s hair metal list. And uh, it is very interesting to me how I I think are people listening to the songs or are they just going for the look? Like here's here's somebody saving rock because they got like uh you know some tight pants on and a wallet chain and uh, long hair. And it, it's always, uh, not always, I'll get, I'll get surprised, but it's always uh, 
some really bad easy chords, you know, A, C, D, or, you know, G, A, B, and then always bad lyrics. Yeah, I'm going to taste you, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Holy shit. Now, if you're into it, cool. That is totally cool. But uh, to say they're saving rock or these guys are firing up the rock world again, it's just really lunacy. Um, anyway, so it was uh, great to uh, to hear, hear this band today that I was turned on to. And uh, I was pretty fired up about it. Uh, Cosmic Country. And also, of course, like I said, something from 2006 that I had no idea about Looking Glass. I don't know if you can see this. No, you can't. I was going to show. Oh, there it is. There, there, there it is. You can kind of see what the cover looks like. Anyway, Looking Glass. Check that out. Um, also, I do want to shout out uh, once again, uh, thank you to everybody that's uh, joined my Patreon, new Patreoners out there. Uh, Eamon Connor, thank you so much. Javier Gago, David Lassiter, and uh, Hugh Craig, the return of Hugh Craig, thank you. And Trash Hook, Trash Pork, that's, that's the name they have down. Joining the Patreon. Thank you so much. Hoping to do a uh, a uh, Zoom maybe tomorrow, uh, Tuesday the 14th. Uh, one thing that I will say, and I, I, I wanted to mention this earlier, and I, 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 I slipped on it, but it was really, uh, I was really emotional last night watching the Academy Awards for two reasons. My mom used to love watching it. My mom loved the Academy Awards. She's the one that got me into it when I was young. And uh, she just loved watching the stars and she dug all that stuff. And it just, I was, I was just dying. I was choking up there in my bedroom, laying down, watching it as these people would win and they would thank their mom, all of them immediately last night. And it was really, uh, it was really just brutal to me. To, to, it was just, I've, I, I, I'm never going to get over my mom being gone. And uh, I get these severe pockets of emotions that just, I just start falling apart. And last night was one of those nights because I had said this before, I was hoping my mom would live long enough to where I would have some great success and be able to thank her on some kind of platform. I always thanked her uh, whenever I was doing something or I would call her. And uh, but, I, you know, I really wanted to have some success, be able to set her up. And uh, I mean, that's why I was busting my ass so hard one of the reasons was to be able to let her just chill uh in the back half of her life you know because it was just uh you know social security and it's just it's just horrible growing old on your own uh with no money it is a a a a, a reality that could happen to me and it's just the truth but I, uh, you know, I, I love what I do. And I, I mean, I love what I do. So I, you know, I, I gamble on it and, um, go as, go as long as I can till I, I can't do it anymore. But to see these people, you know, a lot of their moms were still alive and they got to thank them. It's just amazing to, uh, you know, it, it, it's is wild. I was just, I don't know. I was, I was, I was tore up. It was tearing me up. Cause I was like, God, my mom, she, you know, I mean, yeah, I headlined four, four shows this week and they were sold out. I would have called her and said they were sold out. Her birthday's in two days. She would have been 79 on the 15th and everything's just fucking weighing on me. 
and I'm trying to stay busy and I'm trying to stay positive and I'm trying not to fucking explode in anger. That's the hardest part. I remember Burr was like, yeah, you got to grieve as much as you can. So you don't just fucking lose it at the Starbucks. I said, oh, I said, oh, milk, you fucking. Rah! So I try to keep it together. And, uh, you know, she would have been 79 on the 15th. I love you, mom. And uh, happy birthday. And uh, fuck, man. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's rough. It is rough. Um, thanks everybody for real tuning into the podcast every week. It means a lot to me. I took that time off and, uh, you know, you always fear that, you know, people, people, will, uh, forget about the podcast. Uh, you know, I love doing it. I love doing it for you guys. Um, Let's see. No road dates. I got one coming up with Burr in uh, Texas. When is that? It's on uh, his website, BillBurr.com. Tickets are on sale right now. We're doing Texas, I believe, on the uh, 14th of April. And then we're going to go to the MotoGP. I cannot wait for that. And then um, I'm with Burr this week. In LA or next week, a benefit show on the 21st. Uh, I don't know where that is because I don't have my shit together. But uh, some bird dates, some more headlining dates. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to be in Vegas Easter week. So April 3rd through the 9th, I will be at the Comedy Cellar at the Rio Hotel. Gertie will be there with me. Gertie loves a little Vegas. Pulling up to the tables, right, Gertz? Gertie. Um, oh, real quick sponsor. Gotta love these guys. Standard and strange. My one-stop shop for everything. Boots, leather jackets, denim, and uh, good vibes. Standard and strange. New York City, New Mexico, and Oakland slash Berkeley, California. Tell them I sent you. You'll get a little tasty uh, discount. Standardandstrange.com or their Instagram. They got all the best stuff. Momotaro denim, which is what I wear. Uh, Real McCoy's jackets. I got a Real McCoy's uh, varsity jacket recently. I'm loving that thing. A lot of Real McCoy's. I think Real McCoy's is the greatest brand of all time ever to come out of J uh, Japan. And they do an excellent shot style, deep pocket, not shot, sorry. Uh, excellent style buko. And uh, they do have a shot style kind of uh, regular leather jacket, but I like the Buco D pockets. I like the Buco J 100s standard and strange.com. Also dog food time, Migos dog.com. They got a special going on right now. Go to Migos dog.com, sign up for a subscription. They deliver to anyone in the Los Angeles area. They'll bring the dog food right to you or go to air or the healthy spot and pick up some Migos dog, human grade food made in Malibu, California. Gertie has been eating this stuff for about seven months now. I notice her fur is amazing. She's uh, eased up on the crazy itching and allergies. She doesn't have any of that. And uh, her poops are amazing. Gertie's poops are amazing. Anyway, MigosDog.com. If you want your dog's poop to be amazing, check out Migos. Amazing food. They've got duck. Uh, they got beef coming out. What else they have? They have uh, salmon. Gertie does the salmon. Amazing poops. Yes, Migos.com. And a lot of new merch. Dean Del Rey, the merch is restocked. The Perry Shaw shirt. And the Gertie hoodies, deandelray.com for merch and your tour dates. Okay, a couple more things, and then we will get out of here. Thank you again for tuning in. And uh, thank you for coming out to the shows. I'm looking at my notes here. And uh, it's so funny. There's a... There's a... a 
a note here it says alter who rehab. I don't know what that is. Cause I'm sure the fucking stupid uh, spell check fucked up. And now I have no idea what alter who rehab is. It was like a couple of days ago, I was reading some notes and there was a, a name on my uh, jokes. I had like a long strip of uh, notes for headlining. I, I kind of write down everything, bullet points. And uh, I just like to write out all the jokes, not the whole joke, but before I go on. And then I wrote down this name and it was like, uh, you know, Harry, Harry, uh, I don't know. It was some name, you know, Billy, Billy Sam. I don't know. I, don't, I can't even fucking think of a name right now. Uh, and then I got to the jokes and I was like, what is that joke? I was looking at it for like, like 10 minutes. I was like, what is the fucking Billy Sam joke? What is that? The fuck Billy Sam? Cause that's how I write down the jokes. Where's the, where's the thing? At? Uh, if I had one here, I'd show you. But uh, I go to I go to write down the joke jokes and I just write down shit. Anyway, Billy Sam. Then I realized it was someone that I had to put on the guest list, and I was like, "Fuck, that's <laughs> so dumb, so dumb." Oh yeah, Gertie. Anyway, okay. Oh, one last thing. This is one of my last uh, thing I got on the notes. So, you know. Um, Rolling, you know, I always say, like I said earlier, promote what's great, not what you hate. So Rolling Stone had put together a list of, uh, I think it was like the top 10 worst metal albums and uh, St. Anger was in there. First of all, why even do that, Rolling Stone? Like, that's a, that's a sad year. Let's put together a list of the top worst albums. Like, why? Who cares? If it's bad, why do you want to let people know? Also... Some people, your readers or whatever, might love those records. It's crazy. So there was St. Anger, of course. And, uh, you know, everybody knows I like St. Anger. I've been talking about it for years. People complaining about the fucking stupid snare sound or whatever. No leads, whatever. So I write up uh, on Twitter, you know, St. Anger, wake up, man. I, I keep fucking telling people that record is, it's fucking metal. It's a lot like when, um, when uh, my other favorite Metallica, St. Anger is not my favorite, but my favorite Metallica album, Justice, came out. People were like, uh, you know, the no bass. And I don't understand the songs. They're long and weird. And, uh, uh, uh. but, uh, you know, it, it's crazy to think about how how if you put on this record, man, it's fucking potent. It, it's it's a goddamn metal record, man. And so, you know, I, I, I just shout it out. Hey, this wake up, people. This record's great. And then here comes some fucking dick. And uh, that's why I don't engage uh, with people on Twitter ever. But I, you know, I feel like I always got to support Saint Anger and I support Metallica on whatever they do, just because they're fucking great. And uh, if you're around as long as they are, you know, you're gonna have people that aren't gonna like stuff. So, uh, you know, some guy goes, "Stop dying on that hill! Stop dying on that hill, dude!" You know, when I read shit like that, that's how I read it. And I read it in some fucking shitty dude's voice. Dude, why don't you just stop dying on that hill? Get out of here. St. Anger sucks. Stop dying on that hill. It's like, fuck you. You know? I'm sure you got some record in your collection that is like shit to me. Stop dying on that hill. Unbelievable. Anyway. I don't even know what uh, uh, where I was going with that, but I was just fucking somebody to actually tweet out to tell somebody, you know, stop dying on that hill. I like saying anger. That's how it is, dude. That's how this world is. We all like different stuff. That's why we're all fucking hating each other right now. Because it's like some people like this, other people like that, and they're like, fuck him. 
It's weird. Nobody can have different taste or 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 views or anything without the other person just going, fuck you, fucking hate you, you fucking bald fucking dick. Fuck you and your dumb glasses and your fucking dog. It's crazy, right, Gertie? Uh oh, Gertie. Gertie's getting the blanket. Anyway, relax, people. Relax a little bit out there. You know? People like different shit. You know what I'm saying? I hate broccoli. You probably love broccoli. I'm not like, fuck you and your fucking broccoli breath. It's just how it is, man. If everybody was the same, this planet would be a piece of shit. Just boring. Oh, my God. It's all great. We love everything. Everything's good. You look, everybody likes exactly what I like. So these are the people I'm going to align myself with. And if you don't like what I like, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, keep the candles lit, everybody. And uh, see you on the Patreon and see you out at the uh, comedy clubs and uh, go check out that uh, a couple of those music uh, recommendations I've given you. And uh, I love you guys. Keep the candles lit.